Councilmember Hayden. Here. Councilmember Hooker. Here. Councilmember Menke. Here. Councilmember Raisler. Here. Councilmember Weisenbeck. Here. Councilmember Weisapple. Here. All are present. Next one up the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would somebody like to make a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. We have a motion and second to adopt the agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those say no. It's adopted. Next we'll have public comments. Uh, this opportunity to speak on any subject that's on the agenda or not on the agenda. Please identify yourself for the record. Hearing none, we'll move on to scheduled appearances. Uh, Jonathan Sherwood from Clifton Larson Allen via Zoom will be writing a summary of the uh, 2022 audit. Uh, the hands off handouts we're doing. Uh, uh, the city administrator is going to bring the Jonathan up on the screen. Here. You hear me, Jonathan? Yeah. All right. Here, Jonathan. Can you uh, also see my shared screen as well? Yes. Okay, perfect. Because uh, this is obviously just duplication of uh, what everybody should have in front of them, just the three page handout. So um, I'll be able to scroll through this way too, and it's kind of nice. I got control of everything here, so I can hopefully uh, manage all my screens and everything at the same time. So, first and foremost, I very much appreciate you uh, in the flexibility and allowing me to attend virtually. Definitely uh, uh, makes my life on a personal basis a lot easier dealing with three young kids at home. So, I appreciate eliminating as much travel as possible. So thank you for that right off the bat. Um, also want to thank Scott, Angie, um, Matt, Jenny, basically all the department heads that we get involved in, um, but you know, dealing with all of our questions that we have to address uh, in order to basically prepare all the audit and get everything together um, that you know that we that we need to in order to prepare the nice long 88 page uh, audit report for the city. Um, so I will spare you the um, the reading here for your audit report, uh, which is why I pulled together the three-page overview um, with some financial highlights as well as some key uh, financial indicators. Um, if at any time during my presentation um, you're going to have to identify any questions or anything to Scott, because he's the only uh, individual I can see at the moment, um, but I'm more than happy to address any comments that I can um, during today's meeting. Um, otherwise, if I can't answer directly, I know that Scott's here for us as well to provide some context for us um, before we dive into things. Um, so, when in preparing for the meeting tonight, I know that I want to keep my overall comments very uh, high level and broad because um, I know that we don't want to get into a lot of the nitty gritty details of the, the next long audit report. But uh, Scott did also mention that there are a number of newer um, council members as well. Um, so I can you know, definitely speak to some of just the generalities of what we also then do for the city besides just you know preparing the 88 page document that once it's issued, let's be honest, 98% of them end up on a uh, bookshelf in the administrator's office, never to see the light of day again. Um, so one of the, the the main reason why there's a statutory requirements um, for external honors for all municipalities um, over a certain size. Uh, so the city, that's that's basically the primary driving reason of why um, the city of Durand needs to have an audit every year is it's statutory required. Um, and then obviously then the, the benefit of that is you know, your records are then reviewed all of the amounts and disclosures within your financial statements have a level of assurance placed on them from an outside agency. Um, so then now your, your um, amounts are free and clear of material misstatements. Your financial statements then are used in a variety of capacity from grant funding to long-term debt issuances. Um, and then obviously just making sure that the city in total is staying within fiscal responsibility, very good positive um, budgeting practices can be drawn upon um, and reflected in your audit report. So outside of the audit, uh, there's a lot of other annual requirements that the state places on us through uh, various um, regulatory agencies. So the, the Wisconsin Department of Revenue, uh, the Wisconsin DOT, Wisconsin PSC. So a lot of the information that we help compile and then also place auditing procedures over gets reported to the state and that helps determine state funding through the state shared revenue allocation. Um, general transportation aids gets um, calculated off of this allocation. Um, and then the annual PSC report is also then prepared annually. Um, and that just 
goes down to, to PSC and they monitor basically what's the health and financial capability of the water utility specifically. That's the only um, regulated utility that's within, um, within the city currently. Um, also part of our audit, we issue what's known as the management letter or the government governance letter. So this is a, as part of the audit, we actually take a look at the internal controls of the city in total. Like what is the financial processes um, that the city is operating with? If there's anything in, within that system that we deem to be of, you know, newsworthy or so to speak, we're required by auditing standards to bring those up to the council, to governance level. So those of you sitting around the table need to be aware that there are issues within your internal control structure. These three issues that we are going to, um, that we do present, um, they're listed in your handout here under the, this management letter comment. So there's three technically findings that we are issuing. Um, these three findings, those of you that have been around uh, for more than one or two presentations, these are very, very common items for uh, an organization your size or a governmental entity in you know, Western Wisconsin here. I usually refer to these as the big three. Um, very common for govern governance in your position to have these. I'd be very uh, shocked if you walked into the door and, and saw a presentation like this and they didn't at least mention one, if not all three of these. The first being limited segregation of duties. Clearly your finance staff there is uh, segregated to the extent possible. You technically have three people within that um, office over there that are ha handling financial information uh, in one form or the other. But when it boils down to it, there are certain procedures that everything is flowing through one person or possibly two people. And then if and when somebody would need to be out due to vacation, sickness, long-term disability type situations, all of those responsibilities would fold into one position. Uh, clearly from an audit perspective, you want to have those proper checks and balances. So to the extent possible, you've segregated that as much as possible. Um, I spent a little bit of time describing that to, to boards and, and councils like, um, like this, uh, because one of the biggest compensating controls of having you know, one or two people, key individuals involved in this, the biggest compensating control is you all sitting around the table there uh, this evening reviewing things, asking important questions, getting good transparent answers um, from city staff as far as what are we paying, what are we, you know, what's, what are our major expenditures during the year, when do, when do those things normally occur, um, so if and when, uh, and I say when, questions arise, you, you, you have the ability to ask those questions of your city staff and they're giving you proper answers. Um, everybody likes to think that everybody is, you know, you know, everybody's telling the truth and everybody's a really good person. Um, but it, the, the reality is there is fraud within Western Wisconsin governmental clients. Um, fraud is in existence overall. Um, yes, external auditors are we're on the lookout for it at all times, but 90% of fraud is found internally and reported to the external auditor after those items have already been, been mentioned. Um, so I know that there's headlines out in the news out there um, where there is certain instances of municipal fraud in our area. Um, so it, it's out there, it's real. The big compensating control is that the council and the boards out there are asking the appropriate questions. Um, so I, I bring it up just because it is newsworthy as well. Um, that being said, of all of these issues, they don't raise a red flag for me, um, for, for the city at all. Uh, again, very common, I don't have any concerns by any means, but again, I just want to draw your attention to them. Uh, the next material weakness that I'll uh, touch base on real quickly is just material audit adjustments, which is number two here on our listing. Um, what that means is in order for us to prepare our financial statements, the nice 88 page big thick book, we need to pr propose audit adjustments to the records that we, that we receive from the city in order to get them in the proper form, fashion, proper account balances, proper categorization uh, and the like in order to actually meet the accounting, the generally accepting accounting principles. So to, to be in compliance with GAAP, we need to make some, some journal entries. The journal entries that we needed to make um, were material, were, were large enough in decision-making ability that we need to then say, hey, just so you know, the, the, the council knows, when your auditors came in the door, we needed to make a journal entries um, and they, were, they would impact your financial statements had we not made them. Um, the number of journal entries that we made, um, there's quite a few of them that we need to make throughout the year in order to get things in shape to you know, be in compliance. 
Um, but the number has been decreasing over the last number of years. Um, so credit to Scott, Andy for sure. Um, just in the reconciliation and being prepared at the you know the year end reconciliation and being prepared for the audit coming into it, things are definitely progressing and, and moving in the right direction there. Um, the last finding that we have to pre that present to you is the annual financial reporting under GAAP. It's no, item number three. Essentially what that means is that CLA, as part of our audit work, we also then actually put together the nuts and bolts of the audit report. Um, from my standpoint, that's very common. Basically, I think pretty much all of our municipalities, I think say one, maybe two, um, who have enough staff on hand to actually prepare this and want to stay on top of all the changing regulations and actually draft financial statements. Um, they send their, their financial statements over to us. Um, to me, I actually prefer when CLA actually does the drafting, because if there's any changes, the process is a lot more streamlined and it's a lot easier, to be quite honest. Um, but just so you know, that that, that is a, an additional service that CLA is providing to you. So all that being said, the only real part of your financial statements that CLA actually quote unquote owns is your auditor's opinion. So it's your outside auditor, CLA's opinion over the amounts and the disclosures in your financial statements. We issue what's known as an unmodified opinion or a clean opinion. It's the highest level of assurance from an independent auditor that we can place over your financial statements. It's kind of what we, what we, what we strive for and what our goal is every year. So we're happy to report that we can issue that for your 2022 balances. Um, I've already mentioned some of the other compilation services that we prepare or that we provide for you throughout the course of our audit. Um, and you know, I can't stress enough the additional, more or less accounting services work that you know, as part of the audit, we end up proposing quite a few of those reconciling entries. Um, and I know that I worked with, uh, with Angie quite extensively um, with, our, with my relationship and our relationship with Workhorse, who's the software, the accounting software provider, just getting some of the, you know, the kind of the technical behind the scenes record keeping um, processes of workhorse correct and maintained so hopefully we can um, relieve some headaches in the day-to-day -day life of various various staff so based on that before I jump into any um, financial information are there any questions at this point that I can help address or do I want to not try to put everybody to sleep but keep my comments brief here when it comes to amounts and disclosures any questions about not seeing Okay. Not, not seeing Scott's hand uh, raise at all. Go ahead, John. <laughs> so I have number two here um, on my bullet points. This is the general fund. So these are all of the activities, what it basically takes to run the city from a general government standpoint. Within your financial statements, you have various funds or various activities that are either required to be presented separately or a decision has been made in the past or something has been made where we are required to report a specific activity in a different column, in a different form or fashion. So the general fund, a um, better way of saying it is, this is everything. This is what it takes to run the city. This has got your public, uh, public safety in it, your public works, your general government, your elections, you name it, it's basically in here, unless it's spelled out separately. So within your, excuse me, within your general fund, there's a five year, um, um, trend analysis here of these are your, your balances as of a specific point in time. So your 1231 balances dating back to 2018. The really helpful part, part of this analysis is just kind of looking for outliers who kind of really jumps off the page. Um, and then if there's any you know major variances, you can drill into those numbers and kind of get some explanation as to basically what happened or you know or what was present in that specific year. Um, overall things are Fairly, fairly stable and fairly common um, for for Durant here. There isn't anything that's really like a huge outlier from one year to the next. But I will um, call call to your attention about our way down here on, and I can actually highlight this if you're forgetting that. This due to other funds line. What that basically means is that's um, there's been. In, in the general fund, you work with what's known as a pooled cash amount. So you've got, a, you've got your one main checking account, and when revenues come in, it gets deposited into one general checking account. Expenditures go out, same thing, just in that one specific balance. But it, that's all of the activity, again, for across all of the different various reporting agencies here, the reporting columns that we have. So this due to other fund, basically what that means is the general fund has been cash flowing or basically paying a lot of the bills for some of the other activities. 
So one of the biggest contributors to this $18,000, I'm sorry, this $220,000 balance is the ambulance fund. So we'll get into that later where you'll see the performance of your ambulance fund, but the ambulance basically, the revenues coming in the door from a cash flow standpoint weren't enough to cover the expenditures to pay the bills at the end of the day. At the end of the year, they were quote unquote in the hole and they owed the general fund back a balance and we'll get to it here in a minute. I can show you exactly how much that due to amount was. I think it was like $15,000 or more, maybe $20,000 at the end of the year. So that's that whole function. That's one of those balances that a lot of people will say, well, what does it do from other funds here? It's a receivable, it's internal, just a general brief explanation of what that balance actually represents. One of the other items that's a little unusual to see, not a lot of other municipalities do this, but you have done it for dating back to 2018, is that advance to other funds. So this is some internal financing that was basically done to the utilities. I believe this is to the stormwater utility where the general fund is technically purchased an asset. The asset belongs to the streets paper, I think it was the streets paper. And then over the years, the stormwater utility was making payments back to the general fund. So it's fairly unusual for municipalities in this part of the state to do that. You're able to, that's actually a luxury. I can explain that to you here in a moment. I'll go into more detail on that one as well for you in a few minutes. So what all this basically means here is, or how this is laid out, is a lot of the common questions is, okay, brass tacks, how are we doing as an organization? As a government in western Wisconsin here, how do I compare to my neighbors? How do I compare to the city of Durand to, quote unquote, whatever village, whatever, regardless of their size? Well, there's a few key highlighted indicated rows here. So there's this unassigned fund balance, this expenditures, and then this percentage of unassigned fund balance. So this is a ratio that gets calculated. To back up here a little bit, I'll explain fund balance just briefly. Fund balance, another term for it is going to be like equity or reserves for you. Your equity is then broken down into a few different buckets that were required to report things in. So as part of fund balance, you've got some non-spendable items here that we're reporting. So 2022, you've got this 183,000. Basically, those are reserves that will be able to be used in a future period. However, something needs to happen, or maybe they've actually already been spent in some cases. So as part of your non-spendable items, you've got some prepayments here. So this $18,000 is an asset. Well, it's offset here down in your equity that will be used in a future period. You can't spend it again. It's kind of the key there. Some of the other non-spendable items are like delinquent taxes or something like that, or a long-term receivable. An act would need to happen in order for those resources to become available to us to spend how we want to. The next item here is this assigned fund balance. Basically, what that means is within the city council, you've either designated an individual like Scott or designated a specific purpose for these funds to be set aside for a specific reason. So at the end of 2022, you have 875,000 set aside for specific purposes, and that's broken down for the community pool replacement, as well as the public works motor. That's what both of those two items in there, and that's what's set aside for that, those specific purposes. They're not restricted by anybody. They're restricted by the council, which they can be then reallocated to different amounts. It could be increased. It could be decreased. But those amounts are underneath, still underneath your control locally within your governmental entity. There isn't any restriction placed on those by an outside agency at this point. So that basically leaves us with now what is our unassigned fund balance, what are true unassigned reserves that we can use for essentially any reason for anything going forward. We usually take a look from an outside independent perspective. We take a look at what is our unassigned fund balance as compared to what does it actually take to, like I was referring to in your general fund, your total expenditures. What does it take to run the government for an entire year? So your unassigned or your expenditures are about 1.3 million just to run your general operations of the government. How does that compare to a ratio of what you have in your savings account, so to speak, 
from one year to the next. Compare that, you've got 129% of unassigned fund balance. Well, what does that, that basically mean? Um, the city does have a fund balance policy, which the city policy is that, that unassigned fund balance, you wanna have between 30 and 50% of total general fund expenditures. So 50% of that 1.3 million is what your, your goal would be, kind of the, like a minimum goal or target, where if it would fall below those lines when you adopt your budget during the fall, you would wanna take that into account and basically adopt a, a budget in which you would then build up those reserves to meet your fund balance policy at a minimum. Clearly, you're at 129, you're meeting your, your internal policy. Um, similar governments in our area, yes, you've got some communities out there that um, are having some challenges in their fund balance period, fund balance area. They can be as low as 5%, 2%. I have seen them go negative or actually be at a 0% uh, standpoint before, um, which basically means they've got a lot of borrowing they're gonna need to do in order to make a lot of their improvements. Um, some of the other um, governments are obviously up into the, the 60 to 70 or 80 percent range, um, and a lot of those governments um, got to that position uh, as of late with a lot of the additional ARPA or COVID funding. Um, you can see traditionally, even dating back to 2018, the city of Durant has definitely been running at a you know a very healthy fund balance. Um, Basically, the, the managing of your budget, keeping your expenditures in control here fairly consistent over this, this five-year period of time, um, you've been doing great overall in terms of, you know, from a financial perspective. So again, the benefits of having a healthier fund balance with what you do provides you a lot of benefits here for you to make certain decisions that other municipalities, quite frankly, don't have the ability to, to do. Um, you're, number one, you're avoiding any short-term borrowing needs. So if you have a large project that you would need or some operational costs just kind of come up, you don't have to go out in, in short-term borrow and you know, take on any undue interest that you're, you're avoiding there. Um, it's obviously then providing you financing flex flexibility. I, I highlighted that earlier with that advanced other funds that you were able to do. Uh, the general fund was able to basically finance a purchase, a significant purchase for the stormwater utility um, and basically pay back taxpayers because your, your general fund are your typical taxpayers, whereas in your stormwater <coughs> utility, those are customers or users of that utility. So the, the users of that utility paid interest back to your general fund uh, and your general fund basically made essentially a profit for it um, just internally. Um, and then obviously then it, the, your healthy fund balance would then um, lead into some very favorable long-term debt financing uh, with very, very favorable terms, lower interest rates, and that sort of thing. Uh, and then um, probably most importantly, as we are kind of in the, still progressing in the terms of kind of a, the budget unknownness at the, the state level, um, is you can definitely fill a lot of holes with your current fund balance amounts, you can fill a lot of holes with any budget shortfalls that might arise in the future. Um, you've been very diligent about building up your fund balance and maintaining it at a, uh, a very financially and fiscally responsible level here, um, but you could definitely see a, a couple of comments here down the road. Um, you can definitely erode your fund balance in a hurry um, from the level that you're at now. You could spend that down in various capital projects and whatnot, um, and this could be eroded very quickly if it's not paid attention to going forward. Um, last comment there, I guess, on this 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 um, percentage that we're here. Typically, from an audit perspective and outside user of your financial statements, at a minimum, they're going to want to see your fund balance policy uh, 25 to 33 percent. You know, one to three months of operations that they want to see in your unassigned fund balance category. Um, flipping the page to page two here, I mentioned earlier that your general fund is basically everything else. So now this is kind of going backwards a little bit of well, what is specifically broken out separately. So there's a category known as special revenue funds, which is item number three. So these are these are activities where there's a there's a revenue source that's coming into the city that is restricted and it must be used for a specific purpose. So in this case, you've got two special revenue funds where as soon as the revenue goes over these funds, it must be used for the CDBG revolving loan fund. Um, that's the, um, the housing fund. Um, and then the library 
activities, as soon as that property tax money goes in there and those state aids go in there, they must be used for library activities. So these are the reserves that, you know, that they're going to use from year to year. Um, typically with special revenue funds, the only time that I'm going to really comment on them is if there's significant changes, significant decreases from one year to the next, and that decrease wasn't anticipated. So if it was like your, your CDBG fund, revolving loan fund, if all of a sudden a bunch of loans were made and then a bunch of those loans were then written off, well then you're going to be using up those, those reserves and you're not going to have any balances left in order to then loan out in, the, in a future period. Specifically with the library fund, you can see it's been building up over the last few years and then it's stayed consistent. So essentially with the change between 2021 and 2022, they essentially broke even for the year. What they said they were going to, what they were going to collect and what they were going to get in terms of property tax levy as well as state aids, they basically broke even for the year um, from 21 to 2022. Just a small, um, small decrease there. Um, the library fund is using about $77,000 in property tax levy, uh, which I was just at another community um, a little while ago, and that's significantly less than what this, uh, this other community was actually contributing and uh, using for their library uh, operations. So from the, the total levy limit that you're, you know, because you're statutorily limited in the amount of property tax you can levy, the amount of that property tax levy used to support your library it was considerably less than one of your neighboring communities which then frees that levy up in order to be used for other purposes such as road construction road repair again used in your general funds so to speak um, your next item here that's required to be presented separately is your debt service obligation so this is all the principal and interest that your governmental funds would be played be required to be paid so this doesn't include any debt in your utilities so this is just the government debt. So your, your general fund debt, and then the, there's a loan out there, I believe, for TIM 3 as well, um, gets reported in your debt service fund. So again, this is your reserves here. Um, so this is showing a negative balance. It's kind of a little goofy here. Uh, due to a um, debt refinancing, I believe that was back in 2021. Um, there was a debt refinancing done in 21, um, and that created kind of a an accounting anomaly here where you have a negative balance here. Uh, this negative balance will be basically filled, but the hole will be filled here as the, um, the bonds are paid off. So when those specific debt issuances get paid, um, this negative balance will fall off. Uh, basically, you can see the amount didn't change from 21 to 22 because the amount that was going needed to go diverted into the debt service fund was exactly what was needed to pay principal and interest. Uh, the total principal and interest paid during the year was $226,000 in principal and $49,000 in interest for 2023 or 2022. Um, and then lastly, we do present two different capital projects funds. So these are capital projects. These are specific activities that at the end of them, they'll create either a fixed asset or a um, construction project or something like that that's more than one year that for whatever purpose internally you either either decided that you wanted to track those projects separately or they were required to be tracked separately. So the two items that you have is um, tax inc increment district number three. Um, so statutorily that was created. Um, there is a mandatory termination date on that one that will eventually need to be closed um, in 2034. Um, a very positive outlook here is TID 3 is generating a positive increment, so it's generating tax revenue in it, and that those revenues are sufficient to meet the principal and interest that's needed for the debt that was taken out um, to when TID 3 was created. So at the end of the TID period, any proceeds that are in there, any positive amounts in here, will then need to be dispersed to the various taxing jurisdictions. So the city will get your chunk, the general fund will get its chunk of that, um, of that balance. Uh, but then you'll have to make the county whole, the school district whole, VOTEC whole, um, and they would get a share of that as well. Um, so as that balance grows, we'll definitely want to pay attention to it because uh, as we, you know, maybe some of, some of us in the room will still be around in 2034 when we'll have to pay that out uh, and make maybe a potentially a significant check. Cash flow situation would need to go out to those um, uh, various taxing jurisdictions. 
the cash is in the bank, so to speak, and it's basically dog-eared or, or, or marked for uh, tier three purposes. Uh, the Capital Projects Fund, um, over the years, there's been various activities in there. There's been CBG road construction projects. Um, and then as of late, there has been some preliminary costs reported in here in 21 and 22 for the um, design architecture type costs of the and engineering costs for the pool replacement project are all flowing through um, your Capital Projects Fund currently. Um, switching over to what are known as enterprise funds, also known as business type activities. Um, up until now, the basis of accounting that I've been talking about for anybody that's more finance oriented is governmental accounting. So there's some specific special rules that we play with, that we play under in the governmental funds, that now when we're switching over to enterprise funds, um, they're more they this is true full accrual accounting or business type um, accounting here so you're going to see some 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 things in here like your assets and liabilities that you didn't previously see on page one um, so like capital assets are now are actually on your balance sheet your long-term debt is present in your balance sheet whereas previously they weren't so it's a little bit comparing apples to oranges here um, but some items that will jump off the page at you of like okay where, it, where all of a sudden do we have this crazy $223,000 of an asset sitting on our books? Let's go spend a bunch of money in our water utility and take care of that. Um, well, again, I, I highlight that just because this is a different basis of accounting. This $223,000 in your water utility is the city's participation in the WRS system in total. It's purely an accounting requirement that we're, we're required to book um, but this isn't in a, a tangible asset that you can then liquidate and use for purchasing of equipment or something like that. So I caution you a little bit when you're comparing some of these numbers. Um, really the biggest thing to take a look at for us as far as how are our utilities doing. We'll take a look at this section down here, which is uh, if anybody remembers the accounting 101 classes, uh, things like your, your current ratio. Basically what it means is um, we've got our, our current assets compared to our current liabilities. What do we need in order? What do we need in the bank in order to meet our, our obligations that are, you know, most pressing, most burning? Um, so the desire is you want to have more assets in the bank than you do liabilities. So you want to be able to meet that or have more, than, you know, a current ratio greater than one. Uh, you're currently meeting that in all of your utilities. Um, your closest, your Underperforming <laughs> utility at this point would be your ambulance fund at a 1.58. Um, the capital asset to debt ratio, this is a, a measure of, of your capital assets in your in these various utilities compared to the debt that's out there. You have a lot of debt on an aging and outdated asset that can basically show that eventually you know, you're, you're, you're still paying off a long-term debt um, instrument on an asset that's getting older and older and older that you're going to eventually need to replace. So you want this to be um, greater than two if possible. Um, so right now in the water utility, you're actually at a 1.83, which means you have a lot of debt out there in your water utility and compare that against the assets that are currently recorded. Um, so it's not dire there for your water utility, but something to pay attention to um, and we'll get into your debt schedules here. Part of the reason I believe that we have a lower um, a lower capital asset to debt ratio in your water utility is just due to the terms of the refinance debt as well as you've got a mortgage revenue bond. Um, the, the repayment terms on those are just so long. Um, so you still have a lot of debt out there, which as you make those payments, this will then just improve. Um, and then real briefly here, looking at your operating income and your change in net position. So your operating income, this is just the results of results from operation of the charge just for services. And I'll speak specifically at the water utility in my explanation, and then I'll highlight each one of these here individually. So it's the charges for services in your water utility, your water bills every quarter that get sent out compared to the operating costs, what it takes to get water out of the ground, treated, and to the customer's homes. Um, but the amount that we're charging for that is currently covering its costs to the tune of $82,000 uh, here in 2022. Then in, on top of that, we have to factor in a bunch of other activities to get down to your change in net position. So that one specifically for your, your utilities is the interest on long-term debt. So 
Again, your water utility uh, or any transfers that need to be made over to the general fund. So there's a property tax equivalent expense to the water utility that gets put over to the general fund. So this, this major decrease here from 82,000 down to this 10,000, that's the, the full cost of operating your water utility. Um, again, you're gonna have the same, same type of analysis that you'll wanna do across all the utilities here, basically making sure that your revenue that we're charging for each of these services is at least covering the costs here in your uh, operating income you, you want to make sure that your revenues are covering your costs, so to speak. Um, your water utility is controlled by that Wisconsin PSC, so it's a regulated entity. So if we would want to increase our water rates, we would need to go to PSC and say, hey, here's our, our full rate increase, big, long, convoluted project. They have final say of how much those um, balances are going to increase um, and basically what customer base would, would bear the brunt of those rates. Um, the last time that the full rate increase or a rate increase was done in the water utility here at Durand was 2018. Um, I'm not sure exactly. I think probably the same time frame here for the sewer utility. Um, and I don't recall off the top of my head where store water utilities were. Um, right now we are currently covering our costs. We have positive unrestricted fund or unrestricted net position here in your utilities. So from that standpoint, you're okay. Um, definitely monitor this. Again, the, our neighboring communities in Western Wisconsin that, we, that haven't had water rate increases for even longer period of time since 2018, you know, date that back another six, seven years even. Um, when, they, when they're going into the PSC currently in an inflationary time like we are right now, their, their rates are seriously increasing 80, 90, 100%. So it seems like sticker shock to a lot of residents and water customers after a required increase in their water utilities because the, the utility is very underperforming. Um, just keep an eye on your water rates. Um, that's the full rate increase was done in 2018. I've been basically recommending to all of my, um, all of my clients to go in for what's known as a simplified rate increase. Uh, you'll want a three to 7% increase basically every year. Um, I know a lot of people, it's very unpopular message to hear a lot of times. Uh, but in an inflationary period like that we're in, your water utilities are going to start really underperforming here very quickly due to just increased costs. So keep that into consideration. Um, definitely reach out to, to the PSC with any questions there on where that's going. Um, and you know, if PSC is going to dictate that and require you to make those changes, I would apply that across the board. Um, Ambulance funds are a little bit different, a little bit unique um, due to you know the, the type of customer, so to speak, right? The patients that we're involved in here. Your ambulance fund is technically running at a loss between 2022 and 2021 here, um, but a lot of that is still kind of carry over from COVID. Um, it has been improving, which is a positive outlook. Uh, but again, still there, we'll have to consider taking a look at the ambulance fund specifically and looking at rates that are charged versus the costs that it's incurring uh, to provide that service. Um, that's all I have for you on your enterprise funds. Then real briefly, I just want to highlight here the uh, long-term debt here on page three. So this is all of the long-term debt, all of the obligations outstanding um, for you. You've got essentially two issues that are out there in what it, what's known as the, the um, general obligation standpoint here. So the general obligation bonds and notes, and then there's the similar portion of that here down for your business type activities, which is um, due from water and sewer. So the total amount of that outstanding um, for the bonds, the geo bonds, those are gonna be due and will mature through 2041 with this geo note will this 399 will fall off in 2028. Um, I highlight that specific debt because it, again, uh, going back to your levy limit worksheet, the city has the ability to levy, to increase your levy above statutory uh, maximums based on the amount of debt that's outstanding. So it is a, a budgeting tool to kind of smooth out if your tax levies all of a sudden go up and down. Uh, you can use an adjustment that's out there that you'll, st you'll, you'll, you'll lose some of that ability in 2028 when that debt falls off. Um, you still have the other geo bonds that are out through 2041, you can still utilize in order to, to use that lever, so to speak, uh, from a budgeting aspect. 
Um, lastly, then, in your business type activities, you have these revenue bonds that are out there. That debt is fully supported by the charges for service within your water and sewer utilities. So that collection of those revenues are set aside specifically and pledged uh, to meet that debt obligation. Um, there is a statutory requirement of going back to what your general obligation debt is. So again, that's your general obligation bonds and notes. Um, the total limit there, it's um, subject to 5% of equalized value of everything within city limits here. So the debt that's subject to this $6.2 million limit is the three, just over $3 million. So you're using 48.6% of your statutory limit of GO debt. So you, while you do have some room to borrow for a road project or whatnot, you can essentially double your debt right now underneath the, the, the current valuations, and you'd still be within statutory or bond limits. However, a $3 million debt issuance for a board project where water and sewer is involved, in today's market, that's one or two projects, and you're basically at your statutory maximum. So going back to page one, where you do have a relatively healthy unassigned fund balance, you have financing options right now. Again, I, I've been doing this long enough and doing enough of these presentations lately where other municipalities in our area are at 85, 90% of their debt limit where they might only have available to them $250,000 they can go borrow and then be subject to a statutory limit. So right now you're doing great, you're doing fantastic. There isn't anything that you need to be super concerned with, but you know, diligence and keeping an eye on where, where you are and where you want to go is definitely something for consideration to keep your eyes out for. Um, that's all I have for you tonight. Is there any questions I can address? And of course, if anybody has any other questions after they look at this, feel free to get hold of Scott. Um, and obviously Jonathan would be available if, uh, uh, if uh, somebody wanted to call and ask a few questions, that you'd be available to do that. I'll be more than happy to. Okay. Thank you, Jonathan. Well, thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, thank you, Absolutely, thank you. Um, I do want to make a couple of quick comments about this. Uh, first of all, um, uh, I want to thank the, the staff, um, uh, Scott, Angie, all the department heads, because uh, as you, you can see, um, uh, a lot of hard work goes into this, and um, generally the, the, the numbers have been, have been pretty good. Um, since I've been sitting up here in 12, 12 years, there's only one other time that we took a major uh, amount of money out of fund balance to do a project, and that was my actual first year here when we did the Riverfront and we did Madison Street, I believe, right, Matt? Correct. When we, that was the first, we did two major projects in a year. The fund balance was getting up there, and we pulled out, I can't remember what the number was, $300,000 specifically for that. That's the only other time. <coughs> Now, since then, the idea is we knew we were building up that the swimming pool was going to be. So, and again, so we assigned money for, from that to make sure that this wasn't going to put us in a financial bind. Um, the other thing about doing a good job when we're looking at even just the unassigned balance coming in at 129%, um, which means basically we could run for 16 months with no, no, no income, you know, and... But the other good thing about it is, as Jonathan mentioned, a few times where we've said, instead of going out and borrowing the money, we just borrow it from ourselves from a fund. We pay for something, and then it, it gets paid back. And it, it's a good situation to be in. Plus, the other thing that we have to look at, if we ever had a major emergency in town, something would happen where we needed cash, a couple hundred thousand dollars to deal with a major emergency, we would be able to do that without having to run out and borrow money. And that's the other nice, nice, nice thing about it is. So um, uh, again, the hard work, previous councils, the, the staff and everybody, uh, everybody does a good job watching budgets, make sure we're not uh, going crazy with stuff. And I think it's put us in a pretty good financial. Now this is the picture at the end of last year. Now, um, uh, when I say last year, 2022, now they've already been in to start the audit for 2023. And I believe you said you're hoping to get most of it wrapped up before, or at least, um, it, it will be wrapped up before I leave. So it's going to be earlier, so hopefully we will have the picture at the end of 2023 here before, uh, before uh, he retires. 
um, and so on. So those are the comments I want to make. Uh, you, do you want to make any comments? I'm going to make some comments. I'm going to make some comments in my, my report, and I'm going to talk about that ambulance situation a little bit. Okay. Get <laughs> as well, because um, things have vastly improved. Again, the, the main thing you, know, you, you saw the two worst years, COVID years here, where we took a beating, um, and you know, just from off the top. So back in 21, our customer revenue was $103,000. Um, our customer revenue in 23 was 304,000. Um, the first three months of this year, we're averaging $40,000 a month. Um, again, we're already at <laughs> we're at 67,000, I think, for this year. Um, and again, that was that was $100,000 just two years ago. So again, a lot of kudos to some people in the room. And so, but I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit more when we get there. Okay. Any other questions on the audit report? Okay. Next, move on to the consent agenda. The following matters may be acted upon by the City Council utilizing a single vote individual items, which any member wishes to address in greater detail, or as a separate item on the regular agenda, may be removed from the consent agenda upon the request of any council member. We have the minutes from the regular City Council meeting from March 27, 2024, bartender license for Kaylee J. Hagen at the Rooster Tail uh, Bar, and for Amy J. McNaughton for the Family Dollar. Everything's fine. Okay. Someone would like to make a motion on the consent agenda? Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and second uh, to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. It is approved. <coughs> next, we move on to business agenda, mayor's report. Um, first thing I want to talk about it is next Tuesday is the reorganizational meeting of the, of the council. Um, statutorily required to be on that date. And now the thing about it is when we put it on the thing we said 6.30, you will notice that the copy you receive says 5.30, because that's what we did a year ago on Tuesday. So we've already posted it as a 5.30 meeting, not a 6.30 meeting. I'm asking right now, we can always amend, if anybody has an issue with a 5.30 start next Tuesday for the reorganization. It's usually not too long of a meeting. We uh, swear in the, the, the returning of the new members. Uh, we also go ahead and appoint committees and so on and so forth. Is there anybody on the council or Leanne, as, as the incoming with a 5.30 start instead of a 6.30 start? Because we can always And we have to be here, correct? What? And we have to be here, right? Yeah, we expect everybody to be here for the reorganization meeting. Uh, so There's on. an event at the school that I was supposed to be at, but if we have it at 5.30, I could probably just get a little, be there a little late. Be there a little, okay. Um, oh, that's right, that event's going on. I saw that. The, so everybody's fine? Okay, so we'll leave it as posted with a five, uh, 5.30. Um, the other thing about it, and of course we'll be talking this about meeting with PAA concerning uh, the, the search for a new city administrator. Uh, I had the opportunity to do a conference call with Scott and Kevin last week and uh, put some information together and we'll talk about that when we get to, to that. Um, continuing meetings uh, with uh, the swim club uh, and the major donors and so on with that and where things are coming along um, and again because we want to make sure everybody's up to date, everything is uh, and obviously, I uh, want to thank, um, especially City Administrator Rasmussen on his help working with all of this. And he's going to have a little bit to report on financing and how we're going to get through that period of time when the, when the pool is going to be completed and the final donations and everything's coming in uh, when we uh, come to that. Um, boards, commissions, so on. We do have a few openings. If anybody knows if somebody's interested, I'll be finalizing those over the weekend. Obviously, most people are good about serving again the citizen members again we appreciate the citizen members who serve on our boards and commissions you don't get paid to do anything uh, do that you show up for meetings and so on and uh, but if anybody knows of some folks always like some new faces so if anybody a, a certain uh, board or commission that we've got some spots um, uh, and so on just go ahead and um, uh, send it my direction and maybe we can do it. we do already have some new interested people on the library board and so on and uh, hopefully we'll be able to um, fill those uh, positions. Um, I got contacted last week by the Department of Transportation <laughs> um, uh, and it looks like the governor's coming to town. Um, it's a, it's, and when it, the reason why the DOT contacted us was because of the fact it's about his project of filling potholes. <laughs> so sometime toward the end of April, beginning part of May, we don't have the exact date yet, we've get, been given a couple of windows, um, but the governor will be here to uh, for an event uh, about filling potholes and that type of thing. 
We'll make sure everybody knows about it, and obviously the, uh, they'll want to make sure, I'm sure the DOT will get it out to the press uh, also. But again, I'll be planning for that, uh, and I'm guessing we'll probably may have a couple weeks notice, <coughs> when, uh, or a week or so notice when, when, when the governor uh, will be here. The last thing I'd like to do, uh, we do have one person serving uh, their last meeting, uh, Council Member Don Hayden. Uh, I want to say thank, thanks to Don for his service to the City Council on two couple different stints that he's been with us. Uh, also like to thank Don, his service to the community has been long standing. Um, a member of the ambulance service for many years, a member of the fire department, in fact still I believe a senior member. A senior member, yeah. Of the, of the, of the fire department. And obviously uh, him and his, uh, his wife Val, um, and again she also served on ambulance and has tr done trainings, done those types of things. Um, so going to be around, maybe not all year, but uh, stuff will, uh, but, um, and again, so I would like to thank Don for his years of service to the council and his service uh, uh, to the community. So I th thank you, Don. Thank you, Don. Yeah. Uh, speech or anything? Uh, no speech. Okay, <laughs> okay. okay. That's, that's everything I've got. Nothing was brought off of the um, consent agenda. Administrator's report. Administrator Rasmus. Okay. I'll, I'll try to. Keep this a little more brief than Jonathan did. He promised me 20 minutes tops. <laughs> a lot of good information there, and he gets, you know, he obviously he's got a limit, limit to there, just maybe one time a year to present it. So yeah, I, I knew it was going to take a little longer than that. But uh, uh, from the standpoint, as the mayor noted, um, I just wanted to update you all on basically on, on some of the things that I'm going to be really working on um, in the limited time yet here. Uh, the main piece being obviously the um, some of our debt financing for projects, especially the swimming pool. Uh, the Sixth Street, Sixth Street Avenue project, uh, things of that nature. Um, I've met a couple times now and, and kind of culminated this morning with uh, uh, some good news from uh, Security Financial. Uh, obviously, we're aware that uh, our pool project, roughly you know, $4 million, a little bit less than that. Um, a big part of the coverage is from a local, uh, a, a local business with a million dollar match to what the city's putting in. Um, the only downside of that is uh, we're probably not going to get that money until early next year. So the fact that the pool project is is advancing more quickly than maybe we thought. Um, obviously, we have to finance that million dollars uh, in, in the meantime until we get that money. Um, at this point, Security Financial has agreed, and obviously you'll have to approve this uh, probably at your next meeting, um, to essentially grant us up to a million dollars line of credit, so to speak, for a 12-month period, which would be more than enough uh, to cover that. Um, they're waiving uh, some certain fees, um, and they, so again, as a plus to this project, so on. Uh, you know, a major thanks to them, uh, willing to do so. And again, you'll see a resolution to that effect uh, probably at the next council meeting. Uh, similarly, we talked to them about uh, again some of the upcoming projects, specifically the Sixth Avenue, uh, and then you know, kind of back to our audit discussion on fund balance. Um, how much do we need to borrow? How much do we want to use out of fund balance? One piece I, get, I, I did want to chime in on regarding fund balance, recall, again, this was at the end of 2022. So in 2023, uh, the council approved an additional $250,000 of fund balance to go towards the pool to get us to that basically uh, seven seventy five. dollars um, So that's not reflected in here, but it will be. So um, you know, that'll be some use of that fund balance. Um, but so from a little standpoint, though, um, you know, the rates that they're giving us are, are better than the state trust fund loan that we would typically go to that the city's gone to in the past. Um, that's kind of, I call that kind of our easy loan versus going out in the open market with the uh, with the bond sales. Uh, obviously, we're, we're gonna have to do that for, for Madison Street and any major projects of that type, but um, it doesn't allow us to pay the funds back um, if, we, if we get money up front. So again, I think that's a um, thank you to them for their, for their efforts and uh, you'll see those that coming at the next council meeting. Um, talk to just a little bit briefly, another piece obviously the 23 audit having that done and, uh, and again hopefully you'll get to see Jonathan again here in, in just a few more months to kind of cover that and go over that piece. Um, and then yeah, back to the, you know, again, the capital projects that we're talking about, we've got you know, obviously some capital issues for fire, um, obviously the Madison Street, um, you know, just uh, you know, a lot of stuff going out there. Um, obviously getting ready, Matt and I have talked a lot about, again, Try not to make sure that we're in a good good spot to, to move forward with Madison Street next year and come up with an idea back to some of the things that Jonathan brought up too from the utilities of clearly 
before we go through that project, you're going to have to have water rate increase. I mean, basically, it was, was the last water rate increase was um, was a direct result of the Seventh Avenue project. Um, so, from that standpoint, prior to um, uh, obviously accepting uh, bids, hopefully next year at some point, um, we're going to have a plan in place for what the utilities are going to have to basically cover to make that work. Because at the end of the day. Again, back to our, our, our debt situation. Um, another plus side again. That, so our, our debt limit has gone up over five hundred thousand dollars from for twenty twenty three for an equalized valuation. So that's a plus. But as we talked about, that's we're not going to be able to cover Madison Street just through general obligation borrowing. We're going to have to go to revenue bonds. I mean, so the rates are going to be a little bit higher. But again, that's just one way around the, um, uh, the limitations that we're under at the state level to make sure that we get. Uh, Get those projects done, especially with the uh, almost nine hundred thousand dollars in grants that we have to to cover that project. So that's uh, my quick summary of uh, what I have on my docket for the next few months. Were you mentioning about the ambulance fund? I was actually just going to wait till um, we talked to ambulance. What I can oh, okay. sort of no, address it. No, yeah. we can wait. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, that's fine. Right. Anything else? No. Okay. Any questions for the city administrator? Hearing none. Discussion possible action regarding accepting the Public Administration Associates contract for the administrator search. Obviously, at the last meeting, we went forward with uh, going ahead with PAA. Uh, in your packet was the actual uh, contract um, that, uh, that we'll need to approve. Um, and as we said, we're maxing it out. We're paying a third, a third, a third on this, um, and so on. Uh, it, it includes everything that, um, uh, that they will do for us. Uh, in, in the process. But again, it's the actual contract it's based on the amount that we approve. Um, anyway. Yeah, I was just going to say, and you all, so I emailed you all the, uh, the assessment. Um, again, they, they take those things pretty seriously. They want, again, they want your input. Um, I, I didn't talk to Kevin about it, but I think at some point they're going to share that with, with staff as well. But at this point, he wanted um, specifically okay. council input. Council first. Um, and, and again, need those back by Friday. By Friday, if, yeah, if, if you can. Um, if you have any questions on them, you know, let me know. I thought they, did they just get submitted online? Was I supposed to print something too? No. You can submit them online. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Or you can print it, if you can print it out. Right, then, right, yeah, however you want to. It's scan yeah, back yeah. to them. Oh. Yeah, you can yeah. print that. Yeah. So, um, the only other thing that uh, Kevin wanted me to share, there was certainly some discussion last time regarding what, what the range of the job is going to be advertised at. Um, he provided some when the mayor and I had the, the conference call with him and Sean Murphy, who's also in the area, going to be helping out on this project. Um, you know, Kevin's to the point of that basically, and this I'm just quoting his last email. So basically, the range of, of 90,000 to 110 uh, for Duran is justifiable and reflects the current market. Again, their point is that they, they don't want to go below that, and so that's um, again that's the recommendation that. That they've come forth, but doesn't mean that it can't be further discussed uh, as we move forward. But it would have to be talked about pretty, pretty quickly because that's that's really what they're recommending. Um, the other thing, and then everybody got a copy of the schedule. Yeah, the schedule as well. It came up. Yeah. Um, so uh, you know, as far as uh, getting this together, um, and with the idea of hopefully a approximate start date in July, if everything goes according to plan. Um, we did talk about in our meeting uh, specifically about the, the interviews that the council would obviously be interviewing when we get down to the finalists, whether it's two or three finalists or maybe four, I don't know. But generally, I think we always keep four or less would be our finalist list. Then also about putting together a community group that would, would meet with the candidates. Um, we had talked about doing something similar we did last time was the, um, there would be interviewed with the, with the council alone and the community group and then also um, somebody to take them on a tour of the community and talk about and then we put, sort of put all that information together to make our final decision. The other thing about, the, of course, the, 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 the range for the, the, as far as advertising for it, it obviously falls in with somebody's experience. Uh, that comes into where, that, where somebody would fall, um, you know, and as far as how we would, uh, you know, finalize uh, a salary for somebody. Um, and obviously, in that situation, part of their contract is PA's help with that. Right. To, to come with the, the final uh, the final compensation package. Any questions? So we need to make a motion to approve this. Yes. Make a motion we approve the 
Municipal Executive Search Services Agreement of PAA. Second. We have motion second. We have it on the floor for any further discussion. And again, it falls in, obviously, the total amount is what we've already agreed, or at least agreed to in, in a motion that we would do this. This is just specifically the contract. No other questions? Let's have a roll call on that, please. Councilmember Bracelor. Yes. Councilmember Mankey. Yes. Councilmember Hooker. Yes. Councilmember Hayden. Yes. Councilmember Weisapple. Yes. Councilmember Weisenbeck. Yes. All six in favor. Okay. Motion's agreed to. Next, we have discussion of possible action relating to the request submitted by Scott Bauer to combine the current three parcels he owns at 216002480000/001002 into one regular lot at his residence at 307 4th Avenue East per the enclosed certified survey map. This went in front of Planning Commission at 5 o'clock this evening. Uh, so Administrator uh, Rasmussen, if you'd like to give us an update on. Sure. First thing I would note is that uh, there is an updated CSM certified survey map on your desk. It's highlighted in yellow. You can see that next right on top there. Um, the only, so if you notice on the first on the first <coughs> map, we had um, we have Mr. Bowers in the audience and Ron Jasperson here at the CSM. Um, in the first piece, the neighbors. Well, here I am right here. So I'm showing. First one that you got in packet. I uh, notice that. Um, uh, the lot line actually um, you know, is, is frankly too close to the, uh, the garage of the neighbor. This is uh, Ms. Beesterville's property. Ms. Beesterville used to own this property as well. Some of you might recall back to our vacant building days, there was an old house on here that was vacant. And, and so that, that at some point got, uh, got taken down. Uh, Mr. Bauer bought that lot. And so basically, again, what he's trying to do here is he's got three different parcels here he's trying to combine into one CSM. And uh, per code and state statute, that has to go before the planning commission. And as the mayor noted, they approved it. Um, you know, from the standpoint of clearly, we can't. We're not going to approve a CSM that's basically in violation of our ordinances regarding this garage. Um, so what you see before you in the revised is it bumps out that lot line to form an out lot. And I thank Mr. Jasperson for doing that and Mr. Bauer for for complying in a very short time frame to get this uh, before plan commission and, and ultimately council. So now everything's in complete compliance and uh, and again, uh, plan commission had no issues with it and recommended it to the council. And there was a question about the one shed on the back that is okay. up against the lot. But also, uh, uh, the Bowers, you actually own that other lot behind it. Yeah. And it's, a, it's an old shed garage. And your intention is on the, the space that's there to put up a garage type structure, um, a freestanding one on that, on that part of the lot. Yeah, and we, we were less concerned about that shed because it's not permanent. Obviously, the garage is going to be there for decades, and so we just couldn't have it uh, impinging on that. Again, it was fixed and uh, we should be good to go. And we do have, obviously, um, the applicant here plus the, um, uh, the preparer of the certified survey map. So if there's any questions from the council. Any questions for the applicant? If not, would somebody like to make a motion in this matter? I'll make a motion that we approve the or you want me to say this? It's certified survey map. Okay, approve the certified survey map. Is there second, a second? No? Second. We have a motion second to approve the certified survey map. Is there any other questions? Um, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion's agreed to. Next, we have discussion possible action regarding rezoning of the current vacant lots on the 300 block of 2nd Avenue East, parcels 216-00244-000, and including number 216-2, or excuse me, 00245-000. Uh, from current <clears throat> R1, 
one and two family residential to B1 Central Business District. Explain the request. All right, so per my memo, that was uh, directed to the planning commission that you all had in your packets. Um, again, these are the, I'm just going to call for lack of simple terms, the Sandy Bauer lots that basically we rezoned last summer from business to residential. Uh, their plans for, in, uh, I'm forgetting his last name, but Sandy Partner Chuck, um, their plans of putting uh, residential properties, um, basically um, duplexes on that property, uh, took a bit of a delay due to increases in interest rates, and so they can't afford to do that um, for probably about two years is, is what, the, what they're indicating to me. So in the meantime, since they borrowed to pay for those lots, they wanted to basically run a, sell sheds off the property, which is what you see on there um, in the last couple of weeks. Um, when, when Sandy first approached me on that, I said, well, it's just going to be a temporary thing. Can we just do it temporarily? Well, in talking to the mayor, two years is not exactly temporarily. And so we thought it best that uh, you go full bore and come back and actually rezone it right back to business for a couple of years or however long they think they're going to be doing that until they, they go forward with their with their residential plans. Um, they were at the plan commission meeting and they indicated that they do have plan. I mean, their, their plans are to make that residential. Um, but again, and so at some point in the future, they're going to have to come back and change it. And frankly, we just thought it was cleaner and uh, it would eliminate anybody else in the city from saying, well, I'd like to temporarily do something on my property. So. So just doing everything you know, completely by the book, uh, the planning commission and being it. It used to be you know, zoned business. Um, they, uh, they recommended that it be zoned back to business. Again, and again, as I said, when it was brought forward, I was just like, if it's at least a couple of years, it was business where they used to sell cars off it, if they're you know, going to use it in, in, a, in a similar manner, just selling something else. I don't think it was a huge deal, but we wanted to make sure that, um, that it was just, uh, so they um, said, let's go back through the process. And again, this was also recommended uh, by the plan, uh, plan Commission did uh, recommend this for approval. Any questions? Comments? Concerns? Now, would somebody like to make a motion in this matter? I'll make a motion. We rezone the parcels indicated on the 300 block seconds uh, to uh, business. Second. Or commercial. We, we have a motion. And a second to approve the rezoning. Is there any questions? Any more questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion's agreed to, it is approved. Next we have discussion possible action regarding providing a letter of support to, the Pepin, to Pepin County in their efforts to purchase the bike trail from XL Energy. We were approached back a few weeks ago um, and basically, this is just a letter of support. There was a sample that um, was put together by the city administrator, and I ran through it, and it looked pretty good. Um, and this is, again, just a letter of support. But uh, it's, it was enough of a thing. I said, I think we should get in front of the council. So we officially go on record that the, that the council agrees if they do purchase the property uh, for, and for the purpose that they're, um, uh, they're going to use it for. Um, and that's the reason why um, uh, I said, let's bring it in front of the full council for approval. Um, are there any questions concerning this letter of support? Yeah, I think they, they want to make crystal clear that they weren't asking for any financial support yeah. from the city, just so in, in applying for a grant. They're applying purchase, for a grant to, yeah, you know, to purchase to, the to route, just over 50 acres of, of property from Excel Energy along the bike trail from the county line to essentially a bike quick trip. But, yeah. And of course, obviously, part of it's in the city. So. Are the counties north of us? Looking to purchase that to keep it a bike trail too, or um, have I'm they already? Not sure. I'm, I'm going to guess that Excel will be willing to work with them, but yeah, I, I don't know the details of that. Down. Yeah. I don't. I don't. No. no. If we have a deal, do you know anything about the details, the details or? Doug County's looking into it. We've been okay. talking about purchasing. So it wouldn't make sense for us to purchase if we sure. can't connect it to. Well, that was that was my yeah. thought. Yeah. So do we need a motion or is it yes. just an FYI? No, I, I like a motion, just so it's on record that we, um, so if somebody might make a motion. I'll make a motion we uh, publish a letter of support to Pepin County in efforts to support or purchase the bike trail from XL Energy. Second. We have a motion and second. Is there any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Three, two, we'll get that letter put together and off to the count. 
Um, moving on to public safety, police department, Chief Ridgeway. All right, um, our Explorers program, unfortunately, we were having to postpone that. We didn't have enough sign-ups. Um, we originally had four, and then last minute we had one more that signed up for a total of five. We were going to run the program if we got to ten. Um, so we're going to postpone it, um, have a meeting, discuss uh, how we want to proceed with this. I don't know if it's something maybe we try in the summer when they're on, kids are on uh, school summer break, do it during the weekday. We're not quite sure kind of what's holding us up from getting the, the numbers that we need to run the program. So we're going to talk about it some more and come up with a plan. We'd like to definitely continue this program, um, especially if we, we added fire and EMS this last year. And hopefully we can get enough kids uh, interested in it to keep doing it here in the future. But we'll keep working on it. Um, over the last two weeks, we've had two incidents of uh, dogs running at large, and they were they were aggressive towards people. Came up to people aggressively. Uh, both dog, both dog owners were were cited in those incidents. So I just remind residents: keep your dogs. You know, if they're going to leave your yard, keep them leashed, fenced in, whatever you need to do. They can't be leaving your property. Um, so we did have a few issues there that have been addressed. Um, April 1st, the department, um, most of the members of the department attended a traffic incident management training uh, along with EMS, fire, sheriff's department, uh, put on by the state patrol and the DOT. Uh, good training on uh, officer and responder safety during incidents on highways. Uh, so I appreciate uh, that training coming locally so our officers could go. Um, and then Brandon's been busy working on bike safety day that he does every year in May for the elementary kids. So um, we'll get some staff on that day to go up and uh, help kids uh, learn how to safely ride their bike on our streets before they hit summer break. That's all I have. Any questions for the chief? Hear none. Move on to the fire department, Chief King. Uh, yes, the monthly report uh, for March. The big projects we're still waiting on is the generator. The generator and all the equipment is here. Uh, Richardson Electric is waiting on Excel for they actually got to do a disconnect of the building so they can get the transfer switch put in where the meter is. So Excel's, or Richardson Electric's working with Excel. I'm getting that done yet. No dates. So we got an email. On an actual date. Next week. Next week. It's actually a, an Excel holdup, not a, a local contractor holding. Uh, our guys also re attended that time training uh, that Stan was talking about on April 1st. Um, the fundraiser is coming up May 18th. Uh, all that planning is full steam ahead. Everything's looking great for another great year of fundraising. Uh, the Firefighter 1 class that's being currently held in Durand here, the last class is Thursday this Thursday night and then uh, they got uh, 24 hours of hazmat that will start at the end of April and then their final test out is uh, the first part of June so then uh, the four members we put on here a few months back will be full-fledged certified and trained so. uh, on the brush truck that is all in service went on its first call here last Saturday so that's fully functioning running and the ladder truck uh, the other big thing everybody's wanting updates on, I did talk to the salesman and he still says a May build, uh, end of July delivery. And it's scheduled in the computer, it's all scheduled, it's all sitting there at a two and a half, two and a half month build. So he's feeling confident in the okay. end of July, <laughs> is what I got. <laughs> Scott wanted an update. And I, yeah, uh, kind of reached out. Well, to I was him talking to the mayor at the time. time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it was like was it last Friday or yeah. Thursday, yeah. Friday or something. Yeah. So <coughs> that's the updated info as of this past week. So he's pretty confident. So. Uh, other than that, the calls are listed. If anybody has any questions? Okay. Any questions for the fire department? Also, uh, I didn't take this opportunity um, because if it's on, I know that this came up. Uh, just to remind people, and I say this on behalf of all the first responders that are sitting here, uh, whenever there is an emergency, uh, tell the, and since we have an audience, stay away. Uh, gawkers or not. <laughs> so, um, you know, if you want to talk I can talk to that a little bit. So, we had a large wildland fire, swamp fire. <coughs> it was a mile square block. Um, the swamp is in the middle. So, there was tons of road access. And there was a hundred plus vehicles of that night 
people gawking. And when I mean gawking, they were in, stopped in the middle of the road, out of their car. They were blocking our fire operations. They were just nosed down into the ditches like it was mass chaos. Um, I think Stan, uh, he sent an officer out and the county had an officer out. But when it's a mile square and we're running mile by mile by mile around this thing, it's just, what do you do with 100 cars, you know? And then our incident on Saturday, after we pledged the Facebook post out to the community, on Saturday we had a call where we were landing a helicopter and we had a fire truck sideways in the middle of the road. We had an individual driver in the ditch around the fire truck that was sideways in the road. Uh, I'm not sure, does anybody know if that was uh, vehicle was sighted? Potentially was. So. They were gonna cite the individual. We did get a plate number. Um, so I don't know what else to do besides talk about it and tell people to stay away. But. Poor people that, that emergency situations are not spectators. Yeah, and I mean, and the, from the several years to where we're at now, we try to be very visible of what we're doing. We usually have been the last year plus we do uh, press releases within a you know within the next 24 hours in a timely manner so the information we are making public um, uh, with the opportunity of drones we are posting some of the pictures we do take of some of the stuff um, so people have plenty of opportunity to get filled in on the on the on the news so yeah just please please stay away and let us do our job thank you uh, any questions for the fire department None, thank you. Next, we'll move on to ambulance, and I see we have both our co-directors here, uh, Bignall and Dowdy. Uh, go ahead, and then the floor is yours. All right. You guys all have the March report in front of you. We had 28 calls, 27 of them were 9-1. We had one transfer from Wabasha to the Eagles Rest. Um, in March was our first month that we started our new training process since the whole Sacred Heart shutdown. It's going well for the first month anyway. Um, and April 1st, we um, also did the time training, which I required for all of my, for our EMS staff, and we all enjoy that. And that's all I got. Do you have anything to add? I don't believe so, under here. Okay. <laughs> just again, just ask me. Leave. Okay. They start to notice the uh, onlookers too on, on scenes and they do think something. Yeah. 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 Don't need them. So we'll start. If a few citations go out to the individuals. Yeah. The, the, word, starts, the, people the get, word will travel. Deserve to get, yeah. If people get cited, obviously, if they're um, doing that. And I'm sure that, um, I don't know if you know for sure, like this person who went around the fire truck, what, what is it going to be a ticket like that approximately? Get any of you? I don't have proof. A few hundred bucks at least. But that's just kind of a guess because that's where a lot of them land. But a lot of them land. So, and stuff. So, a few citations get their attention, maybe. Fire truck was sideways in the road and they went through the ditch and around it. The uh, incident with the uh, logger just across the river. We had to move our scene just to get because of people driving through, and a couple of them were people that definitely should have known better public people. And, just disrespected law enforcement tell them to move. I mean, it's getting really bad. We live in a small community. We recognize 50 plus percent of these people, too. So it's. Okay. okay. Um, thank you. Uh, and you were talking a little bit of budget on well, the yeah, and just maybe a little continuation from Jonathan's piece. Of, so, as I said earlier, and, and just as a reminder, so there's really two sources. So. Our ambulance service runs from stand, uh, from an expenditure <coughs> side, um, ignoring depreciation, because that's one piece too that, that Jonathan really didn't touch on. So even back in 21, there were we had a, a fifty thousand dollar deficit. Our depreciation is fifty thousand dollars, so our cash balance was basically we broke even. Now, breaking even is not a great thing, but it's better than not. Um, and clearly, we can sustain the service at a break even point. Um, so some of the changes that have been made in the last couple of years, uh, again, I'm just touching base here. So our two main sources of revenue are obviously our customer, what we charge customers, and obviously we charge, we get charged more when we make more calls. And clearly that was an issue as well back in 21 and 22. 21 was almost exclusively COVID, um, you know, and, and 
recall that we weren't allowed to charge for COVID transfers either. So for that, we got, I think it was a $13,000 federal grant you know, to you know, clear the spending more than that. Um, but from the standpoint of, again, moving forward, and especially in just looking at 23, um, so basically the, the two main the customer revenue and then the, what we charge the townships. And uh, recall that we had a $4 increase this year um, per capita for the townships, which raised our, our revenue from basically from 60,000 to 100,000 just for just for that. Um, I heard a few negative comments from a couple of, of the board members on the township, but I was quick to point out that, again, recall that it wasn't just us and the county, the townships all get extra shared revenue as well. That was supposed to be used for um, uh, primarily public safety. So again, there wasn't a single township that got billed more than 5% more than the previous year, even though they got Forty to fifty thousand dollars more in insured revenue, uh, but from that standpoint, so that, that put us over four hundred thousand um, dollars in, in twenty twenty three. Um, so again, more than a hundred thousand dollars to the good. And as I said, we're trending even better in twenty twenty four. And as I said earlier, that's, that's due in a large part to some people, you know, obviously Jeff and Angie and, and Brooke as an officer, but you know, Chief Ridgeway as well, the work that he's doing on the ambulance. So. So again, um, obviously some of those numbers that Jonathan pre presented were not, you know, were not very good, but we are trending in a much better So, better so the question comes up, we obviously took ARPA money to help yeah, offset right. yeah. some of the things. Is the trend, and again, I, I'm not asking you to yeah. put your, mm -hmm. bet your house on this, yeah. but is the trend going to be in a situation that we're going to be able to cover those costs mm -hmm. in the future? Um, uh, with with those revenues that are, are increasing. So recall that we we transferred about fifty thousand dollars in ARPA funding. That is only going to get us through. It's probably done already for this year. Um, and so that was about you know, eighteen thousand a year that we needed over and above. So again, we we have other revenues that will cover that that eighteen thousand dollars that, that goes we'll away with, yeah. with the ARPA funding. Disappear, so we won't be able to get covered. That's probably <coughs> yeah. And again, we we're, we're very clear with the staff that we were it wasn't going to be a case of okay, well we're going back to two seventy five because that wasn't going to fly. Two seventy five for the on call was to stay at the five dollars, and we felt with the, and again with answering our calls and some increased uh, revenue from the townships that we're going to be able to cover that, and we have. Or we have. When you're done, I got one thing. Yeah. I did forget to add the rural annual fire meeting is April 25th and there is uh, it is on the agenda for open discussion on uh, consolidating the city and the rural fire department to one department uh, for the board members that are here it's been an ongoing deal I think the mayor's talked about it a few times yeah. and I, and I, I shared that we met a couple yeah. weeks ago yeah and um, at time on that meeting yeah. we'll make it work What's that? Time seven o'clock. Seven p.m. Yep. Seven, seven o'clock on April twenty fifth. So it is yeah. on the agenda. Um, pretty much, they're looking for ideas and uh, kind of a, a direction to go to investigate drawing up uh, an agreement or not. If, that kind of. Yes. Yeah. touch base more. The I did talk to the city attorney. They said, well, in his notes, it was the rural attorney, but I don't even know if they still have that attorney. Uh, <coughs> so. So That's we'll, out, of my, out of my hands. <coughs> the discussions are going to happen. If anybody wants to be there and yeah. be a part of it, they're more than welcome to show up. It is a public open meeting. Anybody can come sure. to us. Yes. Um, by the way, uh, and I know we talked enough numbers tonight, but I'm going to mention one of the things. And um, the certain funds that we are required statutorily in the audit to treat like almost like businesses. In other words, we have to put in expenses and so on, but we also have to do depreciation. So, that's generally a pretty new law. Hasn't it happened uh, within the last 12 years? I think, did it become, about the time I became mayor, they started requiring oh, it. I, 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 my remembrance is it's been longer than that. But, okay, but I was thinking yeah. that for well, some reason again, at that point. Well, and it, maybe one thing there that you're thinking of. So, so basically, so again, when we're talking water, sewer, utility, or ambulance, and we treat like a proprietary fund, which is like a business. Um, we never used to have to track fixed assets. Okay, the asset yeah, fixed assets. Fixed assets were so. So now we never had to track, for example, and, and assign a value to streets or sidewalks, general fixed assets. We always had okay, to. That's what they did. Yeah, they changed it so yeah, that had to be included. That. So, so, in that, so, that so that's another so. another big piece that the auditors are doing. With the auditors. Okay. Okay, well, next we're on Public Works Utilities. Engineers of Progress. Yes, good evening. Uh, a few quick project updates, 6th Avenue East, 
Uh, contracts have been sent out to next level excavating uh, for your notice of award that you approved for them for the 6th Avenue East project at your previous meeting. Um, talking to them today, we <coughs> should get those contracts signed by next level excavating yet this week. So we get those contracts signed with the bonds and insurance, we'll get them to the city for execution. and hold a pre-construction meeting and then commence construction once school's out. So that project's moving along. Update on Madison Street. Um, we've been looking at the Community Development Block Grant Program in terms of some potential funding for the water and sanitary sewer portion of Madison Street. Um, discussed with our planning grant writing staff and they're recommending that the city should consider uh, moving forward with what they call the project income survey. That's what we've done on your previous projects, Madison three years ago, Washington Street, um, some of those other projects. So uh, the information that Matt provided, there's about 40 rental tenants and homeowners along Madison Street project. So. That's a decent amount of tenants and residents. We'd have to go door to door, have them fill out that financial information form. Um, schedule for that, if you decided to want to do it, would probably be starting it sometime this summer or this fall. Uh, it's not due to the state CDBG department until February, so we have plenty of time to go back multiple times to get a high percentage of people to fill out the survey form. That's usually uh, what helps getting the project funded. You know, the residents on the project, we need to have at least 51% of low to moderate income people uh, to qualify <coughs> to go to the next step to submit for a grant. But we feel that probably would be your, one of your best opportunities in terms of pursuing grant funds. Some of the other programs we talked about, again, are low interest loans with some grant and so forth, where the CDBG, Community Development Block Grant Program for public facilities is up to 66% grant. So there's no loans, but it's all a grant program. So one of the better programs to work with. So if you're interested in that, uh, we'd get you a contract for what our fee for services would be to assist their project area survey and so forth. So that's an update on Madison Street for some of some additional funding. You know, the other project, the water filter plant design, um, we're starting to get organized with uh, assigning team members to start working on the design for that project. So next meeting, I'll have a better idea of a schedule from the design team. Uh, but again, that design needs to be complete by the end of June to go with hopefully a safe drinking water uh, funding application that's due the end of June. That's all I have. Uh, any questions? Any I just questions? want to make one comment, uh, uh, and this relates back to the audit. Uh, an example of something like that, that project is, now we're fronting money out of our general fund to pay for that design and everything, which is good, because we don't have to borrow it. At the end of the day, the project will pay that back. Uh, as part of the as part of the, the cost of the, the thing, mm -hmm. so this is an advantage of us when we approve that. We're saying we got we got money in the bank, so we can do it, get that in place, then get to get the process rolling, and then at that point, that money comes back once the project takes place, and it's it's an advantage of having money available. Correct. Okay. Now, uh, any uh, questions for the city engineer? Hearing none. Uh, move on to March report, Superintendent Gillis. A couple things here. Um, I set in front of you a info sheet for the Highway 10 project. <clears throat> Just some facts and some information on uh, what will be taking place uh, on that project. If you have any questions for that, you can uh, chat and ask me uh, uh, later. Uh, the hydrant flushing, we'll be starting hydrant flushing next week. That edge should be in the paper tomorrow. Uh, that process will be going on for the next probably three to four weeks. Uh, my pickup truck, I believe Scott told you uh, at the last meeting that it would be here in the middle of this month. 
I uh, got notice uh, la in the last week that it has been delayed a month, so it'll be about the middle of May now before uh, the truck showed up uh, on the Ford website. Uh, basically, they just moved the date back a, back a month, uh, citing uh, quality control, basically, <laughs> is what it said on the Ford's website to the dealership. So, uh, unfortunately, it'll be another month out for that. Spring cleanup, uh, it's that time of the year. The dates this year will be April 20th to May 5th. It's essentially three weekends uh, to get your, uh, get your piles out parallel to the curb. Again, there's rules and regulations on size of branches, how they have to be stacked, where they need to be stacked, uh, can't be mixed with leaves. The ad will be in the paper. We'll run the ad on our website as well as our Facebook page. Uh, if it does not follow those rules, it will not be picked up. Uh, as I like to remind everyone in this meeting, uh, this is not meant for you to cut a tree down and set it by the curb and the city picks the tree up. So it's just meant to take care of normal yard waste and, and small pruning. So, uh, but we will be taking place, that will be taking place April 20th to May 5th. Uh, last but not least, the pool. Uh, we had our meeting yesterday, kind of got some tentative dates uh, uh, moving forward. Uh, in the next two weeks or so, you're going to start seeing uh, some foundation excavation, walls, uh, foundation walls, backfilling. Uh, over the course of the next uh, month, you'll see the building start to go up, uh, building excavation. The pool installers are uh, set to show up, um, excavation of the pool uh, around the 20th of May. Um, and you'll start seeing undergrounds, pool walls, rebar, uh, that stuff going up June and July. Uh, the pool decking will be kind of starting to get poured in September. Uh, hopefully we're kind of wrapping up. Uh, everything end of September, beginning of October. Uh, this is just a tentative schedule. Uh, could be farther out, could be done sooner uh, based on you know, rain and availability of parts and things like that. Uh, the total schedule still goes out to um, May of 2025 because they'll have to come back if we don't have time to fire things up and test run if we get a little bit too later into the fall. So just kind of some milestones to look forward uh, to this summer. Other than that, uh, if you have any questions, that's all I got. And, uh, but I'm assuming since we didn't hear about anything, when the site work was done there, and uh, no surprises underneath? Nope, we have had zero surprises so far. We so. like zero surprises you, yes we do and so all that underground work with the moving of the water or the storm sewer has been done and yep the uh so the water main is the water service is into the building the sewer service is into the building the storm water has been routed around the building uh, so essentially all of our i don't want to say all of our underground is done all <coughs> our underground for the building is in you know we'll obviously have a lot of our plumbing underground and pool underground as the pool starts getting built that'll have to go in but all of our what we call our site civil underground is taken care of you might want to piece it seems to be coming up a little bit is uh the fact of so can you just explain quickly why they they tend to dig open it up fill it back in somebody else comes in the next in the next week and yeah, so uh, the biggest thing here is like people have asked, well, if you're putting the pool back in, why'd you dig the old pool out and fill the hole back in? Uh, essentially, this pool is getting shifted about uh, 30 to 40 feet south. So the uh, current deep end will be closer to the shallow end, uh, and we still have to excavate more material out. So we spread the material from the site around. We'll have to haul excess material out. The new building was actually going to be in the shallow end of the old pool. So just how we moved things within that site, basically it's more advantageous to us to get all the old stuff out, fill everything back in to a, to a certain point, uh, and then excavate it back out as uh, it needs to be excavated back out. And as well as we don't want steep sloped banks while we're working up there that people can potentially fall into and 
Uh, if we get rain, that'll they'll it'll just create a mud hole uh, for us to be working in as well. So that's essentially the reasoning for most of that. It was the most asked question I got last week. <laughs> Three different people came up to me and asked me why they did that. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Uh, anything else? Uh, questions uh, for public works or utilities? Uh, the Arkansas Sanitary District still moving forward and hoping to become part of the Duran Sanitary Area. Um, we're looking at 2026, hopefully. Um, we have the property owners, Kurt did talk to them. And it sounds like he's okay with that. It'll actually work out well for him where we want to come across all the uh, trees and everything that would be removed where they like to put a road anyway. <clears throat> so it might work. And uh, we just have to try and make it work with all the road construction. And how's the grant process going? Because you need a, the grant, right? Um, yeah, you know, it's like with that, it, things are moving. Moving along, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there hasn't been any hiccup where we were concerned about the uh, property or <laughs> just switch hands. We uh, assumed that maybe they just brought the property within the last year or two that they would not be interested in having a sewer line going through, but it seems like that's not an issue. Um, but grant-wise and DNR-wise, everything seems to be moving forward yeah. and on that thing if there's any other questions I know we really haven't discussed it here but uh, you after the meeting you talk talk to Matt he'll um, well I'll yeah. take care of all that stuff yeah, yeah. So it runs through yeah run so through he'll be able to do that so. yeah I'm just okay. not here that often I want to be in my part okay it. so um, anyway so then uh, discussion possible uh, the next item next uh, regarding accepting a five thousand dollar donation from the township of Lyme in exchange for um, a 2025 pool membership reciprocity for the residents. Basically what they're saying is that they want to be treated if they're going to make a donation to us. Um, it's sort of an interesting situation for us because we already said, because the school district's making, if anybody in the school district, we would have two different levels. Anyway, as far as a membership or those types of things, um, the cost if you're a, a member, if you live in the uh, Durant, Arkansas school district, um, and so on. But they just requested to be part of this. It's uh, pretty simple, just saying we're accepting the donation and also to make sure any um, citizens from uh, Lima would be, make sure that they would have reciprocity. Um, uh, in other words, the cost would be the same as if you're a city resident. So um, I just wanted to officially do that. So would somebody like to make a motion to accept the donation? I'll make a motion to accept their donation for $5,000. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept the donation. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Both say no. Motion's agreed to. Let's pay the bills. And as we said, we have the upcoming meetings listed there, the one change on there, that will be a 5.30 start on April 16th instead of 6.30. As long as we got a quick minute, uh, ask the clerk, uh, the elections go a little smooth. Long day, but it went well. There we go. Everybody, if uh, by Friday, if everybody could get their information back to PAA concerning the survey about the um, search for a new administrator. Um, besides what's on here, oh, by the way, board of review this year is on the 30th, yes. Tuesday the 30th. Um, and you are on board of review if you were to uh, a year ago. So, what? Not the newly elected. Ones. Not the newly elected. Not the newly elected. Not the newly elected. So, it's everybody who, uh, who is returning. Uh, um, reward. So the district. Yeah. 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 Thank you. April 30th. Yeah. Yes. 
exactly the difference between them? Yes, you have to be. Four to six. <laughs> and you have to be about four to two hours. I think the daily fast is like a dollar. Yeah. Oh, the daily. The daily. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 I was trying to maybe lead the thing too. I know those two. That's right. I was trying to say this morning. Now we got stage. Since your experience, can you fill in? No. Approve the vouchers. Second. We have a motion and second to approve the voucher for call purpose. Councilmember Weisenbach. Yes. Councilmember Riesler. Yes. Councilmember Menke. Yes. Councilmember Hooker. Yes. Councilmember Hayden. Yes. Councilmember Weisackle. Yes. All six in favor. Any other uh, future agenda items uh, that anybody would like to bring up? If not, uh, Council Member Hayden, if you would like to make a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> and a motion. And a second. And a second. We've got a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Pro state no. Thanks for your service, sir. Yes, sir.